Well, I messed up, guys. When I took this thing for its first test drive, though it really wasn't much of a drive because the brakes were locked up, well, I heard a large thud or thump or clunk, something bad. Later, after getting the car up and doing the brake job, which I'm in the middle of doing right now, actually, you've either already seen that video or you're about to see that video, I noticed this. So yeah, snapped the inner axle. I haven't removed it, so I'm not exactly sure yet. Luckily, that's the weakest link and it wasn't the diff because that would have been way more expensive. Not that replacing the axle is inexpensive, but certainly much better. When loading and unloading the trailer, the only way to get the car to move was to crack the front bleeder screws loose. That's how locked up these brakes were. And I think the rear were a little locked up as well, but we'll go over that a little further and confirm it in the next video. I'm pretty certain this is why the axle snapped because the axle was trying to turn but the wheel wouldn't let it because it was locked up so something had to give and it just happened to be the axle, the front left axle. The only way the car is moving right now in this clip is because those bleeder screws are uncapped and loosened, therefore I had no brakes. Removing the axle was going to be a pain, I'm sure of it, and it's 15 degrees outside right now. It's not that cold in the garage but it's cold. And if you guys remember the last time I dealt with removing an axle, it was on the 996, and that was terrible. So I'm hoping that at least on this car, this guy right here will break loose and I'll be able to get it out of there and get the new one in. And that's not the only thing that I messed up. When loading it or unloading it off of one of the trailers, one of the times I foobarred the power steering lines. Somehow they're not leaking, but they are, well, they look really, really bad and they need replaced. So that's not a fun job either. So I have two really unfun, dirty, greasy jobs to do on this car in the cold that I really don't feel like doing, but they need done. Let me show you here what I'm talking about. I'm going to need this. Look here at the axle. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> this part is no longer attached. So we have a break in there somewhere. Luckily, the other side is uh, perfectly fine. No issues there. That's how it's supposed to look. So I gotta get that out of there. I gotta get that unbolted. And then we show you the power steering lines. Somehow these got snagged on the trailer. And uh, this looks bad, but that's not even the worst part. The worst part is here. It got absolutely kinked, but somehow not only does it not leak, the power steering still works fine. So, I mean, I guess it could have been worse, but either way, I got to replace these, so they should disconnect here, and then they come all the way up there, and then connect to the rack up there. So not the absolute worst job, but this is going to suck either way, both jobs. Thankfully, I grabbed a used 997 axle off of eBay for about 250 bucks, which isn't too terrible. New ones are, well, way more than that, and this thing looks almost new. There we have it, a new used axle. Getting the new axle in, I'm not concerned with. It's getting the old one out that I'm having nightmares about. This video is brought to you by Gentle Bands. They took on the task of making non-boring wedding rings and completely knocked it out of the park. And they've been doing it since 2017. If you don't want to be like every other dude out there wearing a really boring, plain looking wedding ring, Gentle Bands is the way to go. And if you'd like to get your own with a discount, go to gentlebands.com, use discount code MATT25 and you'll get 25% off. Now they don't just make rings, they now make an alternative way to wear your ring, which is on a chain. And this is a really nice five millimeter silver wheat chain. This thing is solid. Got some weight to it. If you're like me and often working with your hands and don't want to get a ring dirty or damage it while working on a vehicle, this is a good alternative. If you're wondering what ring this is, this is the Eve. It's tungsten and wood. It just looks really unique and really nice and it's not boring. Not only that, Gentle Bands offers free engraving. So if you don't want to be like every other guy out there, get a nice wedding ring. They have so, so, so many options on gentlebands.com. They've got tungsten, glowstone, dinosaur, fossil, meteorite, wood, titanium, whiskey barrel, Damascus steel, antler. And they put these all together in so many different ways. You can find something that you'll absolutely love. I'm sure of it. Use discount code MATT25 for 25% off. And I've got a link in the description as well.
really doubt this is going to get it. Nope, I don't have any brakes to hold anything on there, so... I tried to think of about as many ways as possible to hold this in place by myself while I used a breaker bar, and to my surprise, none of them worked. At this point here, I had a large pry bar, a large screwdriver, and vice grips. It's not moving. I was actually starting to rock the car off the quick jacks, which was extremely dangerous, so I figured I'm going to put that on pause and move on to the power steering lines. Oh, this is going to make a mess too. But hey, power steering will be nice and bled. Hit the hole. Let them drain for a bit. Take off the other side. So apparently you guys don't like the mustache. It's starting to grow on me. But if you guys hate it that much, I'll shave it if this video gets 3,000 likes. That's not even hard. You guys can do that. Easy peasy. But until then, the taint tickler stays. power steering lines connect to the rack and then their next braking point is right here by the rear tire. There's two connections on there which are kind of goofy but two wrenches and they come apart and then I should be able to remove the whole lines together as a unit and simply install the new ones. them out but there's a problem the lines came out with no problem however there was an issue they weren't the same all right let's look this over because i think i made a boo-boo those look the same that all looks the same yeah everything's the same except the fittings on the end completely different i don't even know how they work ah that sucks i don't know how to how to go around that either And this is just simply aluminum tubing, so perhaps I can come up with a way to cut both of them and put them together with some other type of connector. So anyway, back to the axle removal. You actually have to disassemble part of the suspension to be able to swing the hub out far enough to get the old axle out of there. And the new one in, obviously. All right. I have plenty of access now. Next up, the six Allen headed bolts holding the axle to the stub that goes into the diff. All right, well, I can't get that one. And nope. There are two that I just can't get with the impact. That's not happening. I think it's time to invest in some Milwaukee M18 stuff. Big boy impact. I put it off for as long as I can, but I gotta get some Milwaukee M18 tools. Now, I need more power, so off to Home Depot, I go. Gotta spend a lot of money, unfortunately. Yeah, I just got lucky, that's for sure. Hello, guys. I hope this works. 1,400 foot-pounds, that's gotta be enough. I've had M12 Milwaukee stuff for a while now, but M18 is in another league, another price league. That's why I was pushing this off for as long as I did. Sucker is heavy. Yeah, gonna have to charge it first. That's all right. Luckily, this has 1,400 nut-busting pounds of torque. Well, 
Well, that's just pretty doggone sweet. And charge everything at once. I just gotta wait till that's charged and then we'll see. Hopefully, please let it break that axle nut loose because uh, I don't know what to do if it doesn't. Well, my battery's charged, so it's time to see if all that money on this freaking impact was worth it. You know Milwaukee stuff's not cheap. Even though I did get it on, it was like 120 bucks off. I don't know why, but it was cool. All lit up. <laughs> All right, let's see what you got. Now for this, I do want an actual impact socket because this is it's gonna be a lot of force on this stuff. Luckily, I've got one. Here goes nothing. Hell yeah! Dude, like nothing. Like freaking butter. All right, this has already paid for itself. Well, the axle come out of there because you guys know how much of a struggle I had last time. Luckily, I have an air hammer now. Better tools. Better tools make all the difference, guys. I'm sure your dads and grandpas and uncles and everyone have, have told you that, but wow, so much easier. And I do still have to get those two, those two guys off back there. Yep. One more. Yeah, buddy. I love tools. Tools are the best. Ha! Take that, you son of a gun. We we'll have to pull this apart so you guys and myself can see uh, what exactly I snapped in there. Nobody's stealing this. Get the new one in here. Make sure that's seated. Now I know I could have pulled the whole axle out with the stub that yeah. goes into the differential as one unit, but I didn't want to lose all that diff fluid. I wanted to keep them separate and this turned out to be an easy way to do it with this new powerful impact. And here I'm using my old Ryobi impact because I didn't want to over tighten these. That's done. Now I can get all my suspension put back together. And yes, I'm gonna actually torque this. I just can't torque it right now because I don't have any brakes on the car and the car's up in the air. But once I get it set on the ground, I'll torque it. You have my word. Now I've still got the power steering lines to repair and install. And I also have the brakes to do, but the brakes is in a different video. So whatever you see here, just pretend like you never ever saw it. I'm still waiting on parts. Also, a big shout out to Lee C Parts, who I've gotten a good bit of parts for this car from. They have a huge selection of all sorts of stuff. All right, let's talk about these issues. So, these are the new power steering lines that I got. These are the old ones that I cut off. You might not be able to tell on video, but they're a different size. These have threads inside, and uh, these, these don't. So, my initial plan was to cut both of them and give my best attempt to weld them back together. But... My buddy Tim had a better idea. They make like splice kits for AC lines and stuff. So I ordered some splice kits for AC lines, essentially. For They work for aluminum. So once those come, they basically just sandwich these together. So I'll cut these and put these on there, and it should be 100% leak-free. It's good for like a whole bunch of PSI. It's good for, it's good for this. So that will solve that issue. The next issue is not an issue. I just want to look at this axle. <laughs> Shouldn't be doing that. Not at all. I don't want to mess this boot up because this is a perfectly fine boot. Oh, I can't see any carnage. There's just no bearings. But I, again, I don't know a ton about these things. There's just, there's, I literally feel no bearings in there and there's no bearings in the shaft. So well, that kind of remains a mystery, guys, because I don't really feel like banging this off of there and making a big mess, even though I already have. But you can tell this thing is, uh, 
This thing is completely screwed. But I'll save this because, I don't know, maybe I could rebuild it at some point if I needed an axle. Oh, the next thing I need to do is get all my seatbelt stuff in order and take the old module out of the car so I can send them off to get them rebuilt and the color changed. I've got a lot of the crap buried over here, which is not good. I know, I know, I know, I know. But here's one. There's two. There's three. I just got to find the fourth one. I'm not sure where it is. I need to get this module out, which is, of course, going to be harder now that I have everything else in the way. Hey, that actually wasn't too bad. Made in Sweden, huh? Interesting. Aha! Found it. It was right there all along. So I'm going to package and ship these off tomorrow. And tomorrow is also when the repair kit for this comes in and some other parts come in for the brakes. But I'm glad to have the axle done and the power steering lines will be done shortly. Solid progress. I thought the worst part of this job was going to be the axle, but it went really, really smoothly. Thankfully, if you guys have any ideas as to if I can rebuild this axle or why it failed, other than the brakes being locked up, let me know. All I have to do next is package up the seat belts and airbag module, send them off to safety restore, and then fix these steering lines, and we'll be back on the road. Well, after I finish the brakes, which you'll see in the future. While I waited for the splice lock kit to come in, I figured, what the heck, let's break out the welder and give this thing a shot. I haven't used this in months. I've been meaning to. I need to get a lot of practice because I want to be able to fabricate stuff. So why not give this a try? The battery in my welding helmet was dead, but thankfully this Yes Welder helmet comes with a spare. These are old ones, so I'm just gonna do these because I, uh, I haven't welded in, well, forever, and I've never been good at it. So there's that. I started with the auto set feature, which basically you put in what you're welding and your tungsten and your sizes and all that, and it basically sets it up for you. So that's what I started with. And I immediately burned straight through the metal. That's way too much heat. Still too much. That's just melting away. I don't think this is gonna work either. It's not for my skill set. No, not a chance. No matter how low I turned the welder, I was burning straight through, but oh well, I gave it the old college try. Splice lock kit came in. So now it's time to cut my other power steering lines and then use the splice lock kit to, uh, well, put them together. That's not bottomed out, but this feels very tight. I'm gonna call that good and do the other side. That feels pretty freaking solid, guys. Really solid, actually. I just gotta do the little guy. Now, I know these are gonna sort of be close to each other and that's not ideal, but 
these are right next to each other, so I don't think that'll be an issue. Ideally, I would have cut these differently, but I didn't. It is what it is. Getting the lines into the actual steering rack can be a little tricky because it's really tight in there, so all you really have to do is not drop your tools. And there we go. Got it in there. Axle's repaired, power steering lines are repaired. All that's left to do is, well, drive the car, but I can't drive the car because there's a series of other repairs that I'm currently doing that you'll see in an upcoming video. I also need to grab a couple of those plastic clips that hold the power steering lines in place underneath the car. 